Welcome to the next video in our series explaining how to build your own quadcopter drone. Today we will have a look at an angle or stabilized mode flight controller. This is an advanced version of the rotation rate flight controller we saw in part 13. In part 14 we already explored the advantages of an angle mode flight controller. When you release a stick of the radio transmitter, the roll and pitch angle commands fall back to zero degrees, which will automatically stabilize the drone back to a level position. This makes it easier for the pilots to fly the quadcopter. We already explored how you can measure angles in parts 14 and 15. Remember that this project is divided in several parts. Complex projects such as this one are often cut in smaller independent pieces that are tested separately before all components are put together. Throughout this video series, we followed this philosophy. The first videos solved simple problems with only a few components and limited lines of code. As we progressed further and started to put everything together, we created our first flight controller with only 170 lines of code. We will continue to build on our previous videos and create our second flight controller, which will contain 214 Arduino code lines. Let's start from the flight controller developed in part 12, which was based on the rotation rates. Instead of only measuring the quadcopter rotation rate with the MPU6050 gyroscope, you will now measure angles using the accelerometer of the same sensor. Both the measured rotation rate and the angle are then used in our Kalman filter, which will give a precise and accurate value for the angle. This angle is then compared with the desired angle and a controller will transform this data into a desired rotation rate. We now have a two-loop controller with an inner loop in blue and an outer loop in black. All components of this loop were already programmed in our previous projects, except for the desired angle and the angle controller. Let's start with the desired angle. The desired rotation rates for roll, pitch and yaw were already derived in part 11. Notice that we will not use a two-loop control system for the yaw direction, because when you yaw the quadcopter, you generally do not want it to return to the same yaw position as before. For the angles, we will choose the minimal and maximal value for the roll and pitch to be minus and plus 50 degrees. This corresponds with the values of 1000 and 2000 microseconds on the radio transmitter, leading to the equation displayed on the screen. Remember that the roll angle comes from channel 1 of the radio transmitter and the pitch angle from channel 2. Now that we know the equation for the desired angle, let's proceed to the angle controller. For the angle controller, we will simply use the PID equation derived in part 12 for the rotation rates with some small modifications. First, the error will be defined as the difference between the desired angle and the Kalman angle, instead of the difference between the rotation rates. Second, the P, I and D values change as well and are equal to 2, 0 and 0. We will explore the reason for these values in one of the next videos. Last but not least, the output of our angle controller is not the input for the motor, but the input for the inner loop controller and thus the desired rotation rate. And that's it. With these very simple modifications, you are able to code a two-loop angle mode flight controller. Let's proceed with the full code in Arduino. We will initialize the same variables we already saw in parts 12 and 13. Also, define the variables for the accelerometer and Kalman filter. Add four new variables for the desired roll and pitch angles and the corresponding errors. For the outer loop PID controller, 10 additional variables are necessary. Now copy the Kalman function from part 15, the battery voltage function from part 9, and the receiver function from part 7. 
The gyro and accelerometer functions come from parts 4 and 14. Once again, put your own accelerometer calibration values for the numbers in yellow. The PID function is copied from part 12. Do not forget to reset the PID error and integral values for the outer loop as well. Now light up the LEDs as seen in part 2 and start the communication with the MPU6050. Calibrate the gyroscope with the lines copied from part 5 and set up the communication with the motors. At the end of the setup process, the initial battery level is determined and some lines are added to avoid accidental liftoff as seen in part 13. Start the loop part and determine the angles using the Kalman filter. Calculate the desired angles as seen in this video and determine the error between these desired values and the actual roll and pitch angles. Now calculate the desired roll and pitch rotation rates through the outer loop angle PID controller. Proceed subsequently to the PID controller for the inner loop rotation rates in blue, in order to obtain all parameters for the quadcopter dynamic equations derived in project 11. Now add the same motor limits as in part 13 and finish the loop part by keeping track of the battery level and waiting until 4 milliseconds have passed. Congratulations! You finished programming the angle mode flight controller in Arduino. To upload the code, connect the TNC with your computer. When the code is uploaded, the red LED should illuminate first. From this point, do not move the quadcopter to avoid interfering with the gyro calibration. You can now start the motors by moving the throttle stick softly up and down. After the beeps of the ESC, hold the quadcopter firmly with one hand and increase the throttle to test the flight controller. For your first flight, make sure you start outside at a large grass field without any people nearby to minimize the possibility of damage. You will notice that this flight controller makes the drone much easier to fly for the pilot as it levels itself automatically when releasing the sticks. With the next videos, we will go one step further again and add a barometric sensor. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the series and remember that you can find all tutorials on YouTube and the full code on GitHub. The manual which contains all explications is available as well on GitHub if you need some more information. Thanks for watching and see you next time.